As we're speaking about destiny, I want us to consider something very important that is in the book of Revelation. And in chapter one of the book of Revelation, it says, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings over the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. And here we see something very important, that, the, that Jesus Christ is the ruler over all the kings of the world, and then he called us kings and priests. So our destiny has to do with a kingly call, kingsly call, has to do with a priestly call. Every one of us have a destiny to bring the glory of the Lord and to bring the divine designs of God into the earth. As we say uh, before, the Lord wants to invade and penetrate every area of society. And how we are going to invade these areas of society, first of all, we need to know that we are kings. Now, this is a very uh, common thing to say in churches today. Oh, we are kings. Oh, we are priests. Oh, we are uh, kings. And, uh, but the truth is that in order to be a king, every king that God assigns has a territory. When we speak about the king of Spain, for example, the territory is Spain. It's very clear for us that he is the king over a territory. There are no kings without territories because God wants us to rule with him. And for this, he's revealing not only our destiny, but our royal destiny. And in this royal destiny, he is revealing where are we going to rule. So every person that has come to Jesus Christ that is a true believer and, and I repeat again, uh, every person that has gone astray from their former life to enter into the designs of God was born with an inner design, amen? And this inner design has to do with God governing through kings in the world. So we are all kings because God, Jesus, wants to give back the dominion that we lost when Adam fell into sin. I think it's important to say here, Anna, that you're not talking about the kings of someone in Africa or kings of someone in, in uh, India or someplace like that. We're talking about uh, a spiritual king with the same rulership as Jesus. Exactly. He, he called us kings. Right. So every person from the most simple person in the world that is in Jesus Christ God sees that person as a king. Yep. Why that person sees it as, as a king? Not because that person is going to have a role in the government of their nation. Right. But we, we are kings in order to rule and to bring the designs of God in every area of society. So you would say that what God gave Adam in the garden was a kingship to make him have dominion over the earth. Exactly. He was the first king ah, under the kingship okay. of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now we are all kings, but there is no kings without a territory. Okay. And we see today a lot of people saying, oh yes, I am a, I am a king and the Lord is the king of kings, but you're a king of what? Mm -hmm. What are you ruling? What is your dominion? There you go. The truth is that in our designs, we have already assigned by God a territory right. that we are going to rule with God. Now, how, what is our design? How do we find our design on this earth? What am I called? Most of the people don't know what they are called because for so long it has been said in churches, oh, if you have a call from God is to be a deacon or is to right. be a pastor or an evangelist or a prophet and nowadays an apostle. And if you don't have those calls in your life or those calls have not yet manifested, you feel like you are not being used by God. Mm -hmm. And that is, as we said before, very far from the truth. Mm -hmm. First of all, we need, in order to, to recognize what is our, our destiny, we have to know how were we brought in our childhood. 
like let us let us uh, see someone like Moses. Moses was called to be the deliverer of the people of Israel from Egypt, but the Lord chose him from the beginning Moses and trained him in the house of Pharaoh. Why? Because he needed a kingly understanding, a government understanding. He grew up as the prince of Egypt, understanding government in a corrupt way, which mm -hmm. was Egypt. Mm -hmm. But the structure mm -hmm. of government, the structure of feeling I am a king was inside of Moses. Mm -hmm. So the Lord took him to the wilderness to break all these molds of Egypt inside of him. But the very structure of believing I can be a king was already inside of him. The same thing happened when we analyze the, the destiny of Paul. Or Joseph. Or Joseph. I mean, sure. Paul, by example, he was, he was uh, trained by uh, Gamaliel, right. and he was a very zealous uh, man of God. And That's he right. was, a, I mean, he was a go for it. I mean, right. the minute the church started to flourish, he wanted to kill everybody. He That's went right. to the authorities, made letters. We need to kill all these this non-believers, he calls non-believers mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. they, it was so far away from what he believed as a Jew, that the Lord was going to use that structure again mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to make him understand his call. Mm -hmm. Then he is blinded in the, in the way of Damascus. And then what, what, this is so important that like he's blinded and his eyes cannot see. Because in order to understand who are we in Christ, we have to be blind to our natural understanding. We need to be blind of what the world is offering us to see with clarity. So he was blind for three days until Ananias came. And in those three days, he was just meditating and meditating in that very voice, in that shining, that glow that appeared before him. This is the importance of, of having seen God. And, uh, and the Lord calls, calls him and says, I am calling you an apostle to bring, to open their eyes. This is so important. He's going to be blind and the Lord is telling him in that precise moment, mm -hmm. I am calling you to open the eyes of my people so they can see. And as they see, they're going to be translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Which so, is a very good, I don't mean to interrupt, which is a very good thing that's happening to Paul because this is a, a foreshadow of what needs to happen to the, the people of Israel. They need to have their perception of their reality blinded in order for them to see the true Messiah. Exactly. Yeah. So we need to come to that understanding. We need to develop a blindness to the things of, of this world. And how do we do that? We need intimacy with God. Amen. We need to focus. That's why the Lord gave Paul that amazing revelation and he saw his glory because only one, the Lord says, I am calling you to open his eyes so you can bring them out from the darkness into the light. Only one, only the one that, can, that, that has the ability to open other people's eyes is the one that have seen the true reality of Jesus. And I believe those three days that he was blind, he was meditating in mm -hmm. his vision, mm -hmm. he was meditating on who the Lord was, he was just filling his heart with the presence of God. And because of that enablement, and then he went to Arabia, after all the he was creating all this turmoil, he went to Arabia just to meditate and to meditate and to meditate. He never spoke to one of the apostles. Right. I mean, only meditating in the word. I mean, and the word tells you who you are. And, and, right. and, uh, and he meditated in the word. And when he came to the apostles, the apostles gave him the right hand, recognizing him, you are an apostle of God. Right. So it is in observing how uh, have we been trained in our former days. What is the training? What, what is our passion in our lives? That is a clear direction on how the Lord wants to use us, uh, uh, one and each one of us. Right. In fact, the fact the Lord showed me one time that the passion that he puts inside of every person's heart, mm -hmm. whatever your passion is, it was put there by the Holy Spirit to train you so that you could be kingdom trained in an understanding. In other words, if, if I have a passion to, 
to be um, a, a, a teacher, a passion to, to, to be a salesman, whatever the passion is, God will use this world to train you so that you can be equipped when he moves you into the kingdom. Exactly. Like I was, I was a horseback riding. I, I was a professional horseback rider. And all the understanding that I gained training all these wild animals sure. gave me the amazing, amazing principles of leadership on how That's to right. put my flesh right. under submission. Discipline. How, exactly. How to be disciplined. Yeah. How, to, how to put the devil under right. my feet. Right. Amen. And right. then I, I get to the light of the Bible and the Bible start to enlighten that part that is already written. You have to know that your destiny Amen. is already written That's in right. your spirit. That's right. And when you read the Bible, there are certain words that you're going to read that has to do with that destiny. Amen. And when that word touches that part of your spirit, the fire is going to ignite. Amen. And you're going to know this is the person I am called Amen. to be. Amen. Amen. That's wow. powerful. That's powerful. If they'll get hold of that, that'll set them free. Exactly. Amen. That's why it's so important to read the Bible. Yeah. Because this is a book of light. Amen. This is a book of revelation. Amen. And, and there are certain characters in the Bible with whom do you identify? Mm. That has to do with your call. Amen. Not only you just love this prophet or love That's this. Right. You love some people more than another. That's right. You're inclined to, to, to read some things. I was from the beginning, since I was born again, I was inclined to read the most difficult parts of mm. Ezekiel mm. and Revelation. Mm -hmm. And I mean, all these prophets that were so difficult to read. Why? Because inside of me, it was written prophet of Amen. God. Amen. 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 And the mysteries of God and going to the deep from the beginning. Amen. I was a person that loves the deep. Amen. Amen. And, and when you and when you start to see that in yourself, when you start to understand that the part of you that is pulling you into a deeper understanding is the part of you that God is trying to develop for a richer life. People are so, so dissatisfied with where they're working. Most of the time when you're working, you're dissatisfied because you don't see the destiny that's written in your spirit. Mm -hmm. And the Bible helps you open that, that door to not only see, like you said, light, mm -hmm. but life. Exactly. And how do you see light and life? You have to depend on the Holy Spirit. There you go. For too long, there you go. the church has been relying on, on Amen. messages Amen. that other people has received from God. And the Lord is saying unto you, it is the hour and the time that I want to reveal myself Amen. to you, that Amen. I want to talk to you, Amen. that I want to open the Bible Amen. and talk specifically to you. You don't have right. to receive all the time digested messages. Amen. I have first, first hand messages from, for, for you. I have first hand messages for you, says the Lord. And this is the time that the Lord is calling. The more you are intimate with him, the more you look into his face, the more you know him, the more you're going to know your assignment. Because your assignment has to do on how well you know God. That's it. Amen. Because the destiny of every person in the kingdom of God is to reflect God, to talk about God, to show God to the people not by what you know in your brain, my, my, but my. what is being manifested in your spirit. What you know that you know my, that my, you my, know my, my, my. because you have seen it. And that reminds me of what Moses said. Here's a man who saw God face to face, fasted without bread or water for 80 days. 80 days. And at the end of that period of time, he says, God, if I've found favor. Now, he lives supernaturally to live without bread and water for 80 days. But he's asking God, if I've found favor, show me your ways. How powerful is that? Here's a man who's looking in God's eyes. He knows his tabernacle. He's seen it in heaven. He knows the laws that he's been given. And he's asking God, if I've found favor, show me your ways. How much more? should we be asking the same thing of the Holy Ghost? How much more would our lives change if we understood the ways of God? And that's what the scripture is all about. Because once you know the ways of God, you can understand your destiny, your call, because God is your Father. Amen.
And I just want to pray with our beloved, beloved audience Amen. that they will receive their destiny. Father, I speak to the destiny that is written in every person. And at, with the anointing that you have given, the apostolic and prophetic mm. anointing that you have given me, I call the Praise destiny in every person to come forth, to be enlightened by the fire of God. I call your destiny to ignite in fire, to come to life, to burst forth, to come to your mind and come to your heart, that it mm. will be revealed, that the desires of Christ will come to your heart and you will do it, and there will be fire upon fire in your destiny, and I bless you. I bless you as a child of God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.